Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. This is Molly McCord, and thank you for joining me as this is the Monday podcast where we talk about a healing theme that is coming up strong in this week's energies. We have a dynamic week of energies ahead of us. We're already in it, and I hope that this show helps you move through some blocks, helps you shift your perspective, and helps you end any internal dialogue around duality or contrasts. So, This could help a lot, at least that is my intention, and we'll see where it goes. As you know, uh, those of you who are regular listeners know, I am a channel of information. I listen to my intuitive guidance, and I share with you those messages as they come through. That is how I work with astrology. I feel into the energies. I trust whatever messages show up, whether they are through my Uh, visual, my hearing, or intuitive messages, and I hope that they connect with you. So thank you for joining me today. It is June 10th, 2019, and in the week ahead, we have dynamic energies with Mars in Cancer, making some big changes in our energy fields. Now, Mars is about our desires. It is our ambitions. It's what we go for. Mars is associated with masculine energies within each of us. It is about sexuality. It is about the body. It is about asserting ourselves. Uh, It's how we physically move in the world, and it's how we are in alignment with our human will. Mars is our human will, our human body, and how we make things happen. Now, Mars in Cancer is not at its strength. Uh, Cancer is a water sign, it's a feminine energy, and it's a feeler. So we have this strong Mars energy in a feminine energy that goes with the tides, that moves with the flows, and it can appear moody, it can appear indecisive, uh, but mostly this Mars in Cancer is meant to keep us aware of our emotional body our emotional responses of what is coming up within us that perhaps we didn't see, we didn't know, we didn't acknowledge. Perhaps it was a feeling that was repressed. Perhaps it was a part of yourself that you didn't feel safe understanding or acknowledging. So this Mars in Cancer prefers to be on the sidelines. It's not self-assertive. It isn't something that we want to always put out there. But it's important to be aware of the messages that are coming up for you in your emotional body as well as your physical body and in your intuitive messages because this is the energy of going into what lies beneath the surface and looking at how you truly feel about something. And you know how you feel based on your reaction based on that first response, uh, based on how someone does something or says something and you feel excited, you feel motivated, you feel yes, or you feel a strong retraction or defense or anything that comes up to keep them away. This is what's happening for all of us as Mars journeys through Cancer. And now it will be activating the North Node in Cancer which is what we are learning, developing, and growing. And it's trining the Neptune and Pisces energy at 18 degrees that brings in a spiritual perspective, a bigger understanding, and a desire, a desire to complete a part of our experience. Because Neptune and Pisces is about endings. And when you feel that you can express yourself, that you can get it out of your heart or get it out of your head and you are set free, the energy shifts. So I feel like there's this bigger cycle happening right now about spiritual growth for all of us collectively. But, of course, it comes down to our human choices, our human will, what we want to change, what we want to let go of, and what we want to choose next. Now, the sun is in Gemini. Venus is in Gemini. Gemini is about our mind. 
and all the things that we toss around back and forth in our heads. The ideas that go between our left brain and our right brain, the parts of ourselves that feel split, the parts of ourselves that feel like they are not on the same page, um, the parts of ourselves that can go not only back and forth, but then create even more scenarios in our heads. So it's almost like you think you have two sides of a story and then you go further and you create four sides or you create eight scenarios or you have all these conversations within you that are not resolved. Uh, this is where anxiety resides. This is nervous tension. This is feeling like you don't know what to choose, you don't know what to do, and it creates this split in your energy. It takes you away from peace, it takes you away from your own knowingness. It takes you away from trusting what you feel is best. So we have this duality this week between our heads and our hearts, between our human will and our spiritual growth, between the parts of ourselves that are complete, that are done, uh, the parts of our lives that are ending, the strong energy in Capricorn, which we talk about all the time, uh, with the south node, Saturn, and Pluto in Capricorn all conjunct, means we're clearing out deep, pivotal energies that we've been working with for lifetimes. We're clearing out themes, stories, lessons, choices, ego energies that we've held for lifetimes. And depending on where you're at in your spiritual growth, you might know what the story is. This might all be new to you, but trust your feelings. Does it feel like a significant part of your life is ending? Does it feel like you're moving through a really big time of transformation? Does it feel like some things are permanently ending, permanently over, and that you're meant to move forward into a whole new life or a whole new chapter or a whole new venture of some sort. If this rings true for you, then these are absolutely the energies of right now. And they're the energies that are showing you it's time. It's time to move forward. It's time to move on. It's time to trust the feelings. Now, because we have strong energies in water signs, it's the feelings. And it's knowing that how you feel is enough. It's enough of a reason. It's enough of a choice to move forward in that direction because it feels right. And this could be brand new for some people. And I'm feeling this as a huge opening in the heart, a huge opening within yourself to your own feminine energy of that compassion, of that understanding that you are a multi-layered cake. You're not just your ego. You're not just your title. You're not just who other people think you are. You have many layers underneath. And those are the layers that you're meeting within yourself. You're meeting those layers of what you really feel, of what really matters to you, of what really gets you motivated to live your best life. And so this Mars energy is returning us to our own divine feminine energy. Now, we each have within us the masculine and the feminine. And typically in our modern society, and I'm speaking in terms of developed countries, uh, we reside in patriarchal cultures that really honor the masculine, achiever, go-getter, competitive, make money, be important, show up in the world stuff. And all of that has its place. And all of that can be wonderful and, and good. It doesn't mean it's bad. But we're balancing here. And we're looking at where it's gone too far into a place of ego, competitiveness, aggression. We're looking at where we've lost what matters. 
and that is in our hearts. And that's the feminine energy rising up within each of us. That's the uh, heart openings. That's the ego shatterings, also known as the ego deaths. I talk more about ego deaths on my YouTube channel under spiritual teachings. If this is new to you, please uh, watch those videos as I describe the ego death experience. And what happens is that what dies away and what leaves is part of what is fulfilled, of what you've learned, of what you've experienced. And it's shown you who you have been, what you've chosen, what mattered to you. And the fear comes up when these ego deaths happen, things fall away, things end, things are broken, things hurt. You can go through a lot of pain. You can go go through a lot of emotional turmoil. Um, It can be very chaotic in one's life because so much of life has been built upon a false ego, a false sense of self that wasn't in balance with the wholeness of your energy. And so right now, we're, we've been through this process of opening up to more of our hearts, of our spiritual gifts, of our intuition, um, of our feminine energies, of what you really care about and what you really love. And this is within yourself first, very private, very sacred, very personal. And then that energy gets stronger it gets more powerful, and it becomes this innate part of you that you then feel safe sharing in the world. So we have this rising energy in our hearts, collectively and and individually. We have this rising energy of the feminine imprint, the feminine traits where okay, yes, I do want to achieve or I do want to be successful and I do want to obtain certain things in life, but I'm going to take my heart with me and I'm going to do it with connection to who I really am and I'm not going to surrender any part of me. I'm going to incorporate the truth of who I am. And I feel that for many people, you are meeting this truth in yourself for the very first time. And you're maybe like, what the heck? What is this? What is that? Why do I feel this way? Why is this messy? Why is this complicated? All this stuff. All this stuff comes up. And I'd like to say congratulations to you. Um, This is part of a spiritual awakening, a spiritual expansion, and really good things are coming from it. Really good things will come from it because it's you in a way that you didn't see before. And that's what's wonderful and makes it worthwhile and also makes it turbulent and uncertain. So I guess I want to normalize that for you. Just normalize that the back and forth at times between who you were to who you are becoming is normal. And I feel like we're all doing this on different levels because we are ramping up for next decade, which has very big energies, which brings in more mastery of who you are, the stability, the strength of who you are at a soul level, of what you really, truly love. And for many people, you are creating this new foundation in your life where you live and work, you operate, you breathe, you exist in the wholeness of who you are for the first time in your life. And it has this dynamic effortless flow of giving and receiving of I love what I do I love my life the money comes in the partnerships come in the relationship comes in I'm truly feeling blessed I'm truly feeling alive for the first time in my life Um, I'm just feeling that for so many people 
who have been through the ringer, who have been through some really hard things, like that's the roadmap of where you're going. Um, and I speak this from my own experience. I speak this from people I know who have been through this work, who have been on this journey. And we are all being raised by this new wave, by the way. Um, this isn't something that only certain people are going through because of where they're at on their journey. This is a raising energy that's working with all of us to collectively move us into the next decade so that we can be living in a new paradigm, a new experience of your life. Um, So all that to say, what you're moving through now will be worth it. And June and July are really pivotal energy months around choosing what side of the street you're going to stand on. It's choosing to reside in the energies that are fully in alignment with yourself. And I talked about this last Wednesday. Um, If you haven't listened to that show, I would recommend doing so. Um, I'm trying to remember the date of that show, and I don't remember it, but (laughs) please listen. I think it was the 5th. June 5th, Um, it's a time right now of really getting clear on where you're going to stand in the world, energetically, consciously, intuitively, uh, spiritually as well. And the strongest place to stand is within yourself, within the truth, the truth of who you are. No masks, no facades, no posing for other people, no trying to fit in, no trying at all. There's no trying. It's the beingness. And it's graceful and gentle. And there's something within you that will feel at home. All of these cancer planets right now, the north node in cancer, Mars in Cancer, Mercury in Cancer, are returning you to your internal home and what feels right for you, what feels loving to you, what feels honoring, what feels authentic, what feels true, what is in your heart that is yours. It's a very private energy. It's not meant to be something you publicly declare or need to tweet about. It is an internal energy shift that we're meant to, it's like sit in and feel that it's okay to be myself. It's okay to honor my truth, and in fact, it's required that I trust myself. I trust what feels right. I trust my intuition. I trust my spiritual guidance. I trust what is bigger than me. Um, That is also the Neptune and Pisces, where the spiritual connection that you subscribe to or you believe in keeps you going. God, source, spirit, universe, angels, guides, whatever you choose is always there for you. Absolutely there for you. In fact, um, this reminds me on my one of my Facebook pages, Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord, there's been a bunch of n- older podcast episodes that have been posted. They've been coming up through my RSS feed. And so these are the episodes from like 2012 and um, topics I forgot that I talked about. But one of them um, was about your spirit guides and how they change over and how your angels can change over um, and your relationship with God can shift and your relationship with, with source will change. And that we're never alone through these shifts. And that part of this time 
is allowing yourself to trust these messages, even if they come through in your dream state, uh, because that's also Neptune and Pisces. And the dream state can be where you're working out some situations, you're receiving information, you're receiving messages. If you've ever had a dream where you were really angry at someone about something, and you wake up the next morning and you think, whoa, that was intense, you were working out that anger that maybe you didn't know you had, but you worked it out in the dream state so that you don't have to work it out in person with them. And you don't have to have a fight with them. You already cleared that energy in the dream. So we have support at many levels right now to move through whatever's coming up. That's this higher perspective, the higher support. You're not alone. You have many energy it's like access to different energies available to you. And it's your choice to ask for help and to ask for support in moving through it. And it can just be a very simple intention of please help me release this grief. Please guide me through this pain. Please assist me as I move through this trying time or this difficult experience. Ask. Talk to God, source, spirit. Ask for this help because it's here right now and you could find that some things literally shift overnight and that it feels cleared and relieved within you in a way that you can't mentally understand. So this is the gift of this week um, and going forward into July is to Work with your own intuitive abilities and connections. Ask for help at a higher level and fully expect it to show up, fully expect it to be revealed, especially as you choose the side of the street you want to stand on. That means really grounding yourself in what is true for you what is right for you, what you know you are committed to. Allow this to also be a guiding light for you, what you know is your truth. And it comes from your emotional messages, your intuitive self. It comes from places outside your mind And on that note, this is what I want to talk about next, is this strong mental energy that is moving through us, the Gemini energy, but also the clearing out of past lives, of soul contracts, of karmic situations, of these ongoing patterns or themes in your life that are meant to end. And I kept seeing over the past week, this image of a man um, who was trapped in a dungeon. And I felt it as a man, um, masculine energy, and it was kind of like trapped with the brick walls and the shackles and chains and feeling totally stuck in his life, in his choices, And this could represent masculine energy, by the way, not just a man. And I ask you to just trust what resonates for you. This might not feel true for you. It could actually represent somebody in your life. It could represent a child, a parent, a partner, a friend, um, or it could represent something within yourself. But what I was feeling was this 3D masculine energy that was feeling caged, trapped, and unable to move, as if there were no choices. There was nothing. It was just that I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this situation. I'm stuck in this energy. I'm stuck. And it's very dark. It was a very dark energy. It was a very dark feeling of I can't get out of this. 
And that sense of I can't get out of this is extremely powerless. That's the feeling is that ultimately it's feeling powerless. And I'm, I'm seeing this as a masculine energy in the 3D. So this can also be the collective 3D energy of masculine energy that doesn't know where to go. And it's funny because not only did I see this um, prison, a prisoned energy, but it was at the end of a maze. And so then I got the image of Pac-Man, one of those very first arcade games back in, I think it was the early 80s, And if you're familiar with Pac-Man, you know it's the little Pac-Man going around the maze um, trying to eat, you know, the little pellets and get away from the ghost. And this Pac-Man energy is about moving through the maze, but I feel it as the maze of life. And it was the maze of I made this choice, I took this direction, I had this thought, I went in this way, I had this action. And it was like this bigger picture of the energy ending up in a in a prison of this masculine energy not making choices from the heart or from um his feminine energies if you will the feminine energies of of, of that love or of that sense of love for self is what I mean, like love for self. And so in the Pac-Man game, at least in one of the levels, and I'm doing this all from memory, um, there's the ghost that's chasing the Pac-Man character on the screen. And it feels like this was the fear, operating out of a fear an unconscious fear, an unknown fear, not even something that you knew was chasing you or that you knew was coming up behind you. I feel like there was this unconscious fear that was operating in the background and led to this imprisonment of a masculine energy that was on autopilot and, and didn't know there were other choices. It was almost like I'll do anything to get away from the fear or to not face it, to not face a fear. So then it, energy ends up in this prison, and in this prison or in this um, dungeon, there's the energy of all you can do is face the fear, right? Because it's the sense of, being alone in the darkness, and it feels like the ghost, the Pac-Man ghost is there, which represents your fear, which represents your powerlessness. So I know this is quite the story. So then what I was sensing is a huge transformation. And it's being alone with yourself. It's being alone with the fears that are operating in the background. It's being alone with you, with your own energy, and shifting your perspective completely into a place of full responsibility and full self-love and full self-acceptance. And it's almost like, again, the game is that the fear was just trying to get you alone. And once the fear, once you're alone with your fear, I feel that for many people, their power eventually rises up. Their sense of um, the healthy ego, okay, that healthy warrior, that healthy sense of, oh, this is not over. You know, oh, no, I am not settling for this. This is not the end. It's like that human fight or flight Well, the fight comes back, like that healthy desire to say, no, this is what I want. I want to live. I want to have an amazing life. And you know what? I take responsibility 
I take responsibility for every twist and turn I chose. I take responsibility for what I decided or what I chose or what I said. I take responsibility, and I know that that is no longer me because a part of your energy has died in that prison or in that dungeon, but then this new energy rises up from the floor, and I feel it as the light coming up out of the floor, just go with it, okay? It comes up out of, the, out of the ground, and it's like all of the brick walls and the darkness dissolve, dissolve, and fades away. And instead of feeling trapped, caged, stuck, powerless, once you call in responsibility, self-love, self-acceptance, and compassion. All of that fades away. And then I see this man standing in this beautiful field of flowers. Yeah, some Pac-Man game, isn't it? They didn't make this version of the Pac-Man game. Um, But what changes is you. See, it's you. And so we're used to thinking, oh, the environment has to change. Oh, the dungeon has to change. I'm stuck. No, it's what's within you that changes. And that's what June and July are. We're releasing ourselves from where we thought we had to be, from where we felt stuck, from who we thought we were. And this rising up of light from the floor is like that soul, it's like a sunshine rising up, activating this huge power source. Huge power source where you set yourself free. And you realize you weren't trapped, you weren't caged, you weren't you simply were not connected to your heart, your truth, what you really want now. So it's moving away from that one experience of yourself and moving into the next experience of yourself. And that's where we're going. That's what's needed. Everyone is being asked to power up, to level up. You know, trust that your healing, you're healing your own self limitations because of the internal split, the internal duality that we each hold. Now it's merging merging the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang, the anima and the animus, they are merging in a way that is cohesive, that is allowing of the other, that's accepting. Um, and, And how you'll notice this, too, is how you move through your day and you move between the masculine and the feminine. You move between getting things done and allowing and surrendering. You move between the giving and the receiving, the doing and the being, and it's allowing yourself. For most people, it's actually allowing yourself to receive is where the biggest growth is. Because, again, we're all so programmed to be in the masculine of doing, 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 that we aren't receiving and allowing as needed. And so what happens as well is that you under you start to see in your life all the relationships that aren't in balance. And you see the people who only take, who are only there for certain reasons or who use you or who only want something from you. And then you realize, no, those people got to go. They've got to go not because you're trying to do harm. You know, one of my mottos is always do no harm. But you're just clearer in the energies that you need and require in your life. And, you know, people come in and people come out of our lives. 
And when we go through these big transformative periods, when you're moving through a big time in your life, there can be a turnover in people, in relationships, in friendships, in, in who you interact with and how. This is all very normal. And it can still be hard, honestly. It's sort of like even when something is the right choice or the right decision, it can still hurt your heart. It can still be sad. And it can still be challenging. It takes time to move through those changes, especially if it's a person who's been significant for you or you have been friends for a long time or you thought you would be friends for years to come, but you see you're on very different paths. You can see how the relationship is different now. Um, This is all part of these big energy shifts. And your responsibility is to stand and walk on your side of the street with self-respect. Self-respect, integrity, and understanding what a healthy relationship looks like for you. So that can be just one of the, it's like a tangent or a connected element to these big changes is that we we know ourselves more, we know ourselves more purely. There's a pureness. And then you can see you can see who's contaminating you. Uh the contaminants. And um that's part of these changes. It's part of these big energy cycles. And I guess be gentle with yourself as needed um for those soft many different kinds of people in our lives you know and and some people they take up different portions of our hearts and you know some people might be like 0.5 percent in your heart and those are the easy relationships that uh, you can let go of but it's the the people that take up more of our hearts uh, that can take more time to work through those changes so just be aware of that in yourself and allow that to flow through and allow that to be something that you ask for support with. The other part is to look for your own emotional blocks. And these emotional blocks can be from any area of your life, um, any anything that you've been maybe holding or that's been unconscious in you for a while. With the strong cancer energy, however, it really signifies that we're learning from our childhood patterns. We're learning from our unconscious areas of development. We're learning from what hasn't matured in us. We're learning, at where, we're learning where we didn't feel safe. We're learning where we shut down. We're learning what we did to stay safe. And sometimes an emotional block is created to stay safe so that you don't get hurt again, so you don't feel uh, vulnerable again, so that you don't experience abandonment or rejection or anything like that, right? Very common parts of life. But we create these emotional blocks. And typically that emotional block, like I see it as connected to the ego, And the ego can overcompensate. The ego overcompensates. And this is a time of learning from our hearts. And it could be that if you've developed an overactive ego um, or something that's false, that false ego, there could be a situation in your life here in June or July that tears that down because spirit is saying that's not who you really are 
and you can't fool us. You can't hide from the universe, God, source, spirit, who you really are, because we see your truth, and we see your beautiful heart, and we want you to feel strong, to feel strong in these parts of yourself. So know that it is a big time, and you could require time alone. That's what all three of these energies have in common, actually. Uh, Cancer, Capricorn, and Pisces all like privacy, the hermit. And it can need that time alone, the walks, the solitude, anything to be in your own energy, in your own space. The Gemini energy can be social and want to, you know, talk it out and talk it through. But I feel like there's this stronger energy of privacy right now, of solitude and of tuning inward because we're completing a lot at many energy levels. There's a lot ending across many lifetimes of experiences, and that's why it's so big as well. It's bigger for some people than others. Um, That's part of how the energy on the planet maintains its balance, is that some people, um, like groups, go through something big together while another group has nothing or thinks um, they're missing something. But it's part of how the earth maintains its energetic balance is that um, we go through things in different cycles, in different groups, and in different waves. So do what you can right now to look for the higher soul growth. And you can ask for that. What am I learning? Please show me what I'm meant to learn. Please show me the theme. Please tell me (laughs) what I am supposed to see here. And you will feel it. You will feel it through a key word that you hear, you'll feel it through a message, um, something intuitive, a dream. You could even hear it on a TV show, through a movie, uh, through a song. It will just resonate and click, and you'll say, that's it. That's exactly what I'm healing. That's exactly what is being elevated within me. And that's how I'm rising up to set myself free. So going back to this um, man who is in a prison, in a dungeon, I feel it as that masculine energy, that 3D masculine energy, that limited patriarchal energy that has nowhere to go until it claims responsibility. Otherwise, it will continue to feel trapped or perceive itself as being trapped and limited in how it can operate. But we each have the ability to take responsibility and to claim our power over our whole life, all of it. And when you do that, when that is your intention, you will set yourself free. You will feel a shift. You will feel new energies coming in, and you'll feel a new freedom. So just imagine standing in a field of wildflowers with gorgeous sunlight and warmth and color and beautiful scents in the air, beautiful fragrance. It's like you come alive again. And it's from this new sense of what's possible now. Yeah, why didn't they make this Pac-Man game? I mean, come on. This would have been a a blockbuster. So um, that's what I've been receiving here over the next, Uh, the last few days or so and I really hope it supports you I hope it helps you move through any duality 
in your mind, in your energy, in yourself. Uh, the duality can be the comparison, uh, the back and the forth. What's really coming through with duality is that you're being asked to choose the parts of yourself that are more aligned with who you really are. But then our minds jump in and they create these dialogues in the back and the forth and the what if and the pros and the cons, all these scenarios that will exhaust you and it will create anxiety. So do what you can right now to listen and be receptive to what you know is true for you. And it will shift. It will shift this June, and it will shift in July because of the eclipses. Um, Now, just a reminder, I do have a separate podcast for you on the July eclipses um, that maybe you want to listen to or listen to again as I talk about the July 2nd eclipse, the themes, the keywords, the energies, and then the July 16th eclipse. Uh, Same thing, keywords, themes, and energies. So that can give you a heads up on how big July is. Um, again, it's that standing on a new on the side of the street that's true for you. And the more that you focus on that, the easier it will feel. The easier it will feel to be all of you in the world. Uh, one more thing, also to help those of you who are moving into these new parts of yourself that you're ready to claim and you're ready to follow. Uh, One of my online courses, Mastering Abundance in Your Spiritual Business, is 50% off until the end of June, June 30th, 2019, when you use coupon code JUPITER. JUPITER. That makes it only $44. So Mastering Abundance in Your Spiritual Business, use coupon code JUPITER. The link is below this podcast, or you can go find it at mollymccord.online. This is an audio course, and it has 13 audio recordings with exercises, visualizations, and self-analysis for you to look at your relationship with money, your relationship with receiving your relationship with your professional rates and establishing your business, all that stuff, okay, it's, and more, and so much more. But it's really timely right now um, to get clear on this and to work with this stuff because going forward, people are going to be needing more healers, more guides, um, more authors, more intuitives, more people who can help them on their journey. And it's important that your business has that foundation in place. You don't want to have to learn some of these things the hard way, believe me. Been there, done that. And uh, that's part of what I teach in this audio course. And it's actually intentionally an audio course so that you can listen and write and think and move around. You know how you, I don't know if you do this, but I like to go for walks and just listen to things, and I feel like it opens me up. So it was intentional that it's an audio recording and not video because I feel like it supports uh, people's process. So anyways, 50% off until the end of June. Uh, Check that out. I will be back here on Wednesday as we talk about the energies of July, excuse me, June 12th through the 19th, and we'll go more into the nitty-gritty of the astrology the middle of June, including the Sagittarius full moon that's coming up on June 17th. So my friends, wishing you a beautiful day ahead, uh, wishing you a wonderful shift in any ways that you felt stuck or caged, and just maybe you will see (laughs) Pac-Man. And that will be a sign from spirit, okay? So have a lovely day, and I will connect with you on Wednesday. Take good care. Bye-bye.